Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mosby United Methodist Church. Uh, we thank you for coming uh, to pay your respects to Marge and to celebrate her life and to also offer your comfort to her family and friends who are here this morning. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Uh, following the service today, we'll be going to the cemetery for a committal service. And then there is a lunch at Pinewood Supper Club that you are all invited to. Uh, if you don't go to the cemetery with us, we'll probably be at Pinewood around noon today. So uh, please join us if you're able to do that. Also, uh, the family had asked that uh, we offer communion today as an act of hospitality on behalf of Marge. Uh, in the Methodist tradition, this is open to all. So if you don't have to be a Methodist, you're welcome to come. Uh, Cheryl will be helping me to serve. Serve communion, come forward with your, uh, your hands crossed. Cheryl will give you a piece of bread, and you can dip that in the grape juice and then eat both elements together, okay? All right. Let's begin with a prayer. Lord God, we come to you today on what for many would be considered a sad occasion. As we Say goodbye to a dear and lifelong friend, Marge Brown. And yet, for Marge, this is a celebration. We know that for her there is no more illness, no more suffering. For her there is no more weakness. That Marge is reunited with Buster and with those whom she has loved. And that she is celebrating with you. So, Lord, if we grieve today, we grieve for ourselves and for the loss of a woman that we have held so close to us for so many years and who has inspired so many of us. And yet we celebrate what Marge has accomplished. Lord, we pray that uh, you will give us strength during this service to say farewell to someone we loved much and that you will be with us in the days to come, that the tears may give way to joy as we remember just what a wonderful lady Marge was, and as we anticipate her reward and our reward. Amen. We're going to sing today, sing several songs, because Marge loved to sing and loved to uh, share songs. We're going to start with what a friend we have in Jesus. And if you uh, like music, you can look in the red book on page 526, or you can find it in your program. <laughs>
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Our New Testament reading comes from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 20 through 23. And Paul writes, For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ. And dying is even better. If I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ, so I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. There are a lot of names for the services that we hold following someone's death. Funeral, wake, committal, memorial, celebration. And perhaps there are so many names because people lead so many different kinds of lives and how they live really shapes how we feel about their death. We all have mixed emotions at a time like this. Some folks we mourn and some we remember. And some lives, like Marjorie Rhodes Brown, we celebrate. As I review her life story, I can't help but think of George Bailey in the great Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Marge enjoyed a life of humble joy and service, a life of love, a life well lived, a lot like George Bailey. Frankly, Marge could have been in the movie. She was there for most of it. So, I mean, Marge was 92 years old when she passed away last Thursday. 92. She was born in 1921. And when you think about it, that is a very long time ago. The changes that Marge saw in her lifetime were huge. In 1921, many farmers were still using horses. When Marge was a young girl, radio was just becoming popular. Movies were still silent. I asked her once when she bought her first TV, and Marge said, well, they got one uh, in 1969 so they could watch the moon landing. <laughs> Stuff that we read about in history books, Marge was there. She lived through Prohibition, Great Depression, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, and a little over two weeks later, on Christmas Eve, Marge celebrated her 20th birthday. And she was a bright young woman who served as an army nurse during World War II, launching her on a long life of nursing service. She was head of nursing at Sheboygan Memorial Hospital, and she was very proud of her founding role at the pediatric department at Memorial Hospital. Once, when she was in the hospital, I visited her, and the young nurse came in uh, and asked when Marge had retired. And Marge said, oh, why got out of it when computers got into it? And she gazed suspiciously at those beeping gizmos hooked up to the tubes. And then Marge complimented the good care that her nurse was providing, because Marge knew that no machine could replace the caring human touch in nursing. Marge moved back to Wausau to care for her parents as they aged. And she did a good job at that. And then when she passed, God gave her a tremendous gift. A mischievous young fellow known as Buster Brown. She was 50 and he was 60 and they figured they might have 20 years together if they got hitched. Surprise. They enjoyed almost 40 years. When I first met Buster and Marge in 2010, if I sat in their living room and closed my eyes, I could imagine a pair of newlyweds. They were that much in love. They still liked to tease each other, and they couldn't keep their eyes off of each other. There were a lot of smiles and a lot of joy in that marriage. Lots of adventures, too. They liked to travel. They did a lot of it. Uh, Marge just 
casually mentioned one time that they'd gone to Alaska. And uh, thinking like a young super snapper like I am, I thought, well, did you fly? Did you take a cruise? No, they drove the Alaskan Highway, 1,400 miles of rough gravel road through the wilderness. Yeah, they liked adventures. And Marge and Buster were inspiring and faithful Christians. They loved to read the Bible together. They loved to do devotions. She told me that one of the highlights of their week was going to church, and then they'd go home for a Sunday lunch, and they'd talk about the pastor's sermon. And I thought, ooh. <laughs> When Buster passed away, uh, Marge gave me some of their old Bibles, and uh, I looked through them because uh, there was a lot of wisdom in those pages that they had scribbled in over the years. I copied some of it down, and then we put them out for people to take home. And along with all the notes written on the pages, there were also tucked little articles that he or she had clipped and saved, and occasionally the uh, little mushy love note that they'd leave for each other. Oh, to be young and in love, you know, 70 or 80, young. Marge was proud that she was able to nurse Buster at home and that he could die peacefully in his own bed. And she missed him so much after he was gone. And she grew more frail and, and less able to get out and about. But you know, she still delighted in the little routines of life. A, a warm cat on her lap, a view out the window at the birds and the changing seasons, a daily crossword puzzle, a book to read. She was a very intellectually active lady. And even though Marge could no longer come to church, she stayed very much involved. Every week, Gwyn would take her the uh, last Sunday's church bulletin, and our office would mail her a copy of my sermon, and Marge would get out her Bible and her hymnal and the bulletin of the sermon, and she would pray her way right through the church service, just as if she was here. Wow. Now, many in her, at her age and her failing health might have shriveled in upon themselves or bitter. Uh, often the world really shrinks when you get to that age. Uh, but Marge put a brave face on it. If God had left her here for a bit longer, Marge wasn't going to waste the time. She enjoyed a long life, a well-lived life, a wonderful life. I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul's words in his letter to the Philippian church. Now, mind you, Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter, and he was maybe facing the death sentence. You wouldn't think he had a lot to celebrate either. But this letter is nicknamed the letter of joy because Paul rejoices so much that he uses the word joy or rejoice often. And in a poignant moment, right at the beginning, he talks about the dilemma that we all face, all of us, no matter what age we are, to live a life of joyous service to God and neighbor or to go on to an eternal life of rejoicing in the presence of Jesus Christ and those whom we love. To me, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. If I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ, but I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. March lived for Christ, and she died in Christ, and now she has gone to be with Christ and to be reunited with Buster and the many, many others that she has loved and outlived. Marge is enjoying the great heavenly feast that we hear about in Psalm 23 and that we anticipate in communion. We can celebrate Marge's wonderful life. We can try to live our own lives in emulation of that wonder. And we can rejoice that she now has entered into life eternal, life eternal, a more wonderful life of pure joy unmixed with pain or sorrow, a wonderful eternal life that we also know that we too will one day share. Praise God. Amen. For our second song, let's sing uh, number 378, Amazing Grace. Which talks about that great hope.
ask you to follow along in the program. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Friends, hear the good news. Jesus Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and blessed it, gave thanks to you, Almighty God, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and then gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of So, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ offered for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, and upon these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in communion with all of your saints, especially March, and all those most dear to us, whom we now remember in the silence of our hearts. Finally, by your grace, bring them and all of us to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now, with the confidence of God's children, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, so we may forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Lord. Amen.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of the God of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always.